right, let's move into layouts. Layouts, I think, is really important. We spend half of our time on layouts. And though we spend half of our time on layouts, I do not think layouts are the most important thing on your front end interview, but it is important to understand it, to be able to attack it, and to not be lost if you're given a layout problem. Also, layouts are one of those things that if you don't practice it, then it gets extremely difficult to continue to do in the future. So it is something that you should keep in mind and you should practice. And the last thing I want to say is layouts have become a larger part of front-end interviews as take-home interviews have become more of a thing. The take-home front-end interviews almost always contain a portion of layouts. And most of the time, you'll have to lay something out as well as have event interaction and states. So layouts are important, and we're going to go through how to solve various layout problems. When you're giving a layout, when you are given a layout uh, interview problem, it'll probably look something like this, or at least you hope it looks something like this, and it will contain some sample design requirements. These types of uh, breakdowns are called red lines, as you can see on the left. The one on the right is called something else, but is essentially the same as a red line. And it is going to give us the information that we need in order to build a layout like this. I will say, when you're going into a layout interview or an interview where you know you're going to be asked about layouts, or if you have a take-home interview, one of the best things you can do is look up their design, like how they do their design. So you can look up like Google design or Facebook design, Amazon design, and they will basically have a breakdown of the different design decisions that they've made. And by that, I mean things like colors, border radius, margins, sizes. Most of those things will already be determined. And if you're able to build something to that company's specifications, it's only going to increase your chances of landing a high level role at those companies. So let's dive a little deeper into this red, red line and managing the specifications of the red line. What do we want the red line to do for us? First, we want it to define all the terms. So we have an icon, an H4 title, we have some fine print body, some fine print description. Then we have a body copy description, body copy description, bold. We have some circles. I guess we're just going to call those circles. And then we have some unmarked items. We have things like high details where this looks like a link or it's supposed to do something and we don't have any information on what needs to be done there. And then we have this entire return home button that also is assumingly a link. It has a border radius, there's a color, there's margins, and none of this information is given to us. Uh, this is the first question we want to ask our interviewer. Hey, do you have any markup for this return home button? Is it a standard button? Is this a one-off button? And depending on those answers, you can either refer to the design doc or you can build the button however you see fit to the closest specifications. Now, this is a page from Airbnb, and this is more or less the types of front-end layout interview questions that I'm used to seeing and more or less used to asking, where I give the user a page, and I'm basically like, build some part of this page. And depending on the level, I might even just give them this entire page and be like, build this page. And depending on the questions they ask me, I'll be able to put some restrictions on the build to make it easier for them to actually be able to finish it. So the first thing that I think anyone should ask when presented a question like this in the interview is, what's inside the scope? So what do we actually need to build from this page? And in this case, all of the search on the top is out of scope. So we're not even going to worry about the search. The interviewer said that this is out of, out of scope. 
inside of our inside of our main inside of what's actually inside of our scope we have this main calendar and this calendar has a few things that are going on we have a switch that we're going to call as a component we have these calendars they're seemingly the same so we're just going to call it one calendar component and then we have some styling an unavailable style a selected style a selected range style default text and this month adjust action and this is definitely something that you would want to ask is this in or out of scope do you want this actually to be able to do anything or not all right so now we know what's in scope we have some components listed out. We have some styling listed out. And this allows us to build some red line and components to translate into CSS styles. And that's one of the nice things about breaking down the UI view into these components and doing our own mini red line, because it does allow us to easily transition into CSS styles. So now we know that there's a switch. The switch has options. There's a difference in the CSS between the selected and non-selected option. There's a calendar, and the calendar has a date. And then these are the three things that are different inside of that date calendar. So we have the unavailable, the selected, and the range. So redline basically refers to this, which is having red lines that break down a piece of the view. And a lot of front end interviews use red lines, but it is very common for you also just to get something like this in which you have to build your own sort of markup and I'm calling that a red line, but I basically mean both the red line and markup are the same thing which is to break down the different components and to basically give you some sort of roadmap that you're trying to build in this layout. So we have our CSS broken down. We know that we shouldn't be interacting with other pieces on the page because we're using nice concatenated CSS. So we're confident that this is a good place to start. So now we have this basically broken down. We have our switch, we have a date picker, and we have a calendar. And we're going to move into our first layout exercise, which is going to be, let's build some of this date picker. And I just want to see what happens after this. That's what I thought. OK, so we're going to build some of this date picker as well as we can. And uh, you're basically just going to use the whatever front end knowledge that you have now. You do not have to worry about making these buttons do anything. All we want is for you to build out as much of this as possible. I hope some people started with the red line. If anyone did, that'd be great. And I think that that's uh, always the place that you want to start. But let's jump right into it. So inside of our solution. We're going to start out with the section, which is going to have the data component of date picker. And inside of that, we're going to have an input, which is going to have the type checkbox, and it's going to have a data component switch. On the left, it's going to have a calendar. And on the right, it's going to say on flexible. We're also going to have a section that's going to be related to calendar. And we're going to have another section related to calendar with an offset of one meaning that it's one month after the original calendar. So let's get into the meat, into, I guess this is not the meat, this is the constructor. Let's get into the constructor. So we're going to use our document query selector all for our main data component, which is date picker. And we're going to make our date picker class. Inside of our date picker class, we're going to have a switches object because we know that the switches are of different names and are going to do different things. And then we actually are just going to keep our calendars in the array. We don't need to know specifically which calendar it is. This will allow us just to have as many calendars as we want and utilize them as we please. Inside of our constructor, we're going to have a node. 
And this time we know we're going to want to have a class for the calendar because the calendar itself is its own component. And we're going to want to have a class for switch because switch is also its own component. So we have our main component for data picker. And then we have our two sub components, one for switch and one for calendar. So as I said earlier, we're going to have our switches as an object and our calendars as an array. And inside of our constructor, we're going to go through and say node query selector all data component switch. So we're saying, OK, inside of the, the, the main node, inside of the main node, the date picker node, we're going to want to get all of the switch nodes, and we're going to want to do our normal instantiate the switch, and then set this dot switches switch get identifier, which is going to be a method that we make so that we can identify our switches, and set it equal to our switch that we just instantiated. We're going to do a similar thing for our calendar. However, our calendar just has to push into the array. It doesn't have to set an object. Our CSS looks pretty similar. We have a switch, our switch option, our switch option selected, our date, date unavailable selected, and range. And that's essentially how you set up this problem. And this is a quick note about the consistency of design systems, and that there's consistency through reusable components. There's standard and behavioral rules. There's implementation guidelines, the what and the why, and even the when. And there are directions for exploration. So inside of this, we didn't even go through and write any of the CSS or any of of that, that's all stuff that you can do yourself. However, the main thing that we want to take out of this is how do we take a calendar that has multiple components and how do we instantiate all these components so that we're able to use them and access them later? And we do that through this by allowing us to use a section for date picker and then allowing us to interact with the stuff inside of that which we do by actually utilizing the node directly, right here, by utilizing the node and doing node.querySelectorAll, we're inside of date picker and we're only looking at the things that are relating to that date picker. And as we can see right here is where we would instantiate our calendar or our switch. And then we can go in and start doing our rendering for the entire function. And this is going to be a challenge that everyone should try to finish at home. <laughs>